Good day. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Jim Anderson, and you can see that I am surrounded by my wife and grandchildren. I am a trophy fisherman. Note here, in my right hand, this great fish that I'm holding. I was holding with two hands earlier. But my real catch is my wife, Lois, who you see here. She travels with me most everywhere that I go. And we have three grandchildren. The oldest is named Luke. He's nine years of age. And he too is becoming a trophy fisherman. And then we have Grant. He is five years of age. And most recently, Tori, our little granddaughter, turned four years of age. Now we love our sons. Scott, who has provided the grandchildren, and our son, Nathan, who is not married. We love them, but sometimes we think it would have been better to have our grandchildren first. Of course, you know that that is impossible. But they are a lot of fun. We are surrounded by them quite often. And we watch them grow, and I think they teach us some wonderful things as well. Well, speaking of teaching, I teach about the subject of rest, rest. And specifically, I have a job to help pastors rest. I have found in America, as I work with pastors, but also in Nigeria and in Russia, in fact, wherever I go, I talk to pastors, and one of the biggest problems they have is with fatigue. They are tired. In fact, surveyed, when surveyed, 70% of pastors say that they are very, very tired most of the time. But they're not the only ones that get tired because they're surrounded by people and a pastor's job is never done. All of us, many of us, are tired. We live in a world that is frantic. We run here and there, and we're surrounded by technology. It's almost omnipresent. Our cell phones, our computers, our laptops, our iPods, our iPads, Twitter, and everything else. It surrounded us because we can now work anywhere. We work everywhere and just about all the time. And you might be a single mom or, or a mom or a set of parents with children, and you know how taxing that is, how demanding that is on your time after work hours to raise a family. And children today are pressed as well, stressed because there are many activities. And the list goes on and on. And some of you are in the sandwich generation, that is you're growing, a ch uh, growing children, you're raising a family, but then your parents are nearing the end of their lives and they have special needs, which becomes uh, a responsibility for you as well. Well, we live in a restless world. How can we find rest in this world in which we live? The fatigue factor is real. We are all tired to some extent much of the time. Well, we need a kind of rest that exceeds sleep or leisure. We need a kind of rest, there's a recipe for rest, that goes deep into our lives. And often the reason we can't rest is because deep within we are disturbed. We haven't resolved certain questions in our lives such as a satisfaction question, a security question, or success. Just what is success after all? And that's what I want to talk about today, a recipe for rest. And I'm going to use the most familiar of all psalms, Psalm 23, as it's recited quite often at weddings and especially funerals, even in movies. If they're going to select a scripture reading at a gravesite, it's often the 23rd Psalm. But I've found that there are two 23rd Psalms. There is the original one written by King David long, long ago under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. But then there's another one that is not inspired, but there's truth in it because our lives reflect it. It's called the Workaholic 23rd Psalm. And I want to read it for you. And I want you to take a moment, take a pen, pencil in hand, and uh, write down, or if you have a copy of this psalm, circle the words, underlying words that pertain to you. Otherwise, just write them down and reflect on them. And you might afterwards ask uh, your husband or wife if you're married or maybe even child. Teenagers are brutally honest. What pertains to you of this 
Workaholic, 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my foreman. I shall not rest. He makes me mow down the green pastures. He leads me to generators beside rapid waters. He wears out my soul. He shoves me to conferences for my schedule's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of relaxation, I fear no chance of rest. For my feelings of guilt, they haunt me. Thou dost prepare a work table before me in the presence of my comrades. Thou hast filled my mind with worry. My workload overflows. Surely busyness and pressure will follow me all the days of my life, and I will run to and fro in the house of the Lord forever. That sounds like a pastor, doesn't it? Or a busy church member, a worker. On and on and on it goes. Well, take that moment to identify. Maybe it's worry. That word represents your life because certain things are not resolved deep within your life, such as satisfaction, security, and success. Or maybe guilt. You try to rest, but you feel guilty because there are certain things that are not done. There's always something more to be done. There's always something that needs to be perfected or done better. And you get the idea and you feel pressured. And especially at church, especially with your believing friends because you have expectations of yourself and from them. So the list goes on of reasons why we can't rest. But I want us to look at the real 23rd Psalm. And just before doing that, we need to understand something about King David. You see, King David, before he became a king of Israel, he became a shepherd. He was called from the sheep pens. And you have it written in Psalm 78. It says that God chose David, his servant, and took him from the sheep pens. He took him from tending the sheep. He brought him to be the shepherd of his people, Jacob, of Israel, his inheritance. And David shepherded them with integrity of heart. With skillful hands, he led them. You might say that this was David's preparation to be king. God gave him sheep to lead and to learn from caring about sheep. Then that would help him to lead the people of God with integrity, with strength, with knowledge. There's something about sheep that if we understand them, we can work better with people. If you understand sheep, then you can lead God's people. So this may be a little difficult, even embarrassing, to learn about sheep because if I am a sheep, wow, and God is my shepherd, what does that make me? If the Lord is my shepherd, I am one of his sheep. That means, uh, well, let's think about sheep. Just what are they like? Uh, first of all, we must acknowledge that they are not meat eaters. And most of us, if we had a choice, we'd be a lion or a tiger or something strong that takes down prey and roars like a lion. And, uh, but they don't have those kind of teeth, nor do they have claws to chase after and pull down other animals. And sheep aren't particularly quick of foot after all. They're kind of slow. And they don't even have camel flage. They don't have a, a, a kind of hidden nature. They're bright and white, and you can see them from quite a distance away. And uh, we really don't like to hear this, but sheep aren't known for their great intelligence. That may be quite unfortunate, not only for the sheep, but for us, because if he's my shepherd, I must be one of his lambs, one of his sheep. I'd rather be something much more macho and strong and powerful. The point of it is, if we're going to learn about sheep, we have to acknowledge that they are very dependent animals. They are dependent on someone outside of themselves, someone stronger, someone quicker, someone smarter, someone able to lead them for their safety and their security and their success and satisfaction. All those things are wrapped up not in the sheep, but outside of the sheep, in the shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, I am a sheep. You know, if I'm apart, if I'm independent, if I stray from the shepherd, you know what's likely to happen? Now, there you are, there I am. I brought a mirror, you see yourself? That's what we look like in God's sight, a sheep. 
Uh, that's usually what we, not what we think of when we look in the mirror. But that's how God sees us. And you, you see, the point is, if we wander from the sheep out in the roads or think we know best what to do with our lives, we're likely to become road kill, dead meat. Very sad, very unfortunate. Do you get the picture? I hope you get the picture. That without the shepherd, we are not strong. Our strength, our speed, our protection, our intelligence are outside of ourselves. They are in the shepherd. So I have to say, stay close to the shepherd. Now take a look at these little critters. How sad. If they don't have a shepherd, they're lost. They're apt to die. Almost both of them could fit into the bucket. They are weak. And we again would like to uh, be something strong. Now in my country you have various mascots, uh, images that represent professional teams. You have baseball teams like the Tigers, or a football team known as the Lions. And there are the Panthers, Panthers, and there are the Falcons. They're all meat eaters, whether they be eagles of the sky or land creatures, mammals of the ground. They're ferocious. And there's one mascot, one team that uses the Rams. You've heard of the Rams, but I bet you've never heard of the Lambs. The Lambs, could you imagine if the Lions and the Lambs are to play each other, what the result would be? Well, it would be a disaster for the lambs. We are dependent creatures. Just take a look at ourselves. There we are. And the point of all of this introduction, before we understand the 23rd Psalm, we've got to understand our role. We are deeply dependent, greatly dependent on the shepherd who is our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, I wandered. I wandered in my heart and soul, not content, not satisfied, insecure, and in fact, not successful in many realms. And simply because I hadn't humbled myself to be in or satisfied in the shepherd himself. We strive to serve the contemporary Christian community with a variety of Christian educational and evangelistic resources. To see TVS Seminary's database, please visit tvsseminary.com.